So glad that we can be with you. Uh, this is week eight. Is yes. Of, uh, can you I hope you've already in week eight. So excited, so thrilling. We just started the book of Mark. True. Uh, so we're going through the one year uh, New Testament study. Um, so if you have not gotten on it, make sure you get on it and start with a DJ, with a group. And let's see God move in your life. So we are week eight of this study. God has been speaking. God has been moving. I am thrilled and excited about it. We just started the book of Mark. Yes. Uh, uh, and yeah. so today we're in chapter three. Um, Start with Jesus in um, uh, is it a synagogue? Yeah, yeah, Jesus is in a synagogue, and there's a man with a shriveled hand, and you can just see like guys are on your marks. I know you tension, guy. tension. Just try and heal today. I know. <laughs> Imagine they used a, a sick guy. I know to try and get to trap Jesus. I can't believe it. Yeah. And what happens is Jesus is so moved with compassion. He's so upset. He's like he's angered even. He's like. You brought a sick person to trick me. Imagine. Like I will not have compassion in healing because they knew he was a God of compassion. The guy had a shrivel hand and was, I think they wanted to disarm Jesus. Yeah. Oh, God. It's too early. So, it's, it's too early. early. It's too early. So, let, let's move in at least a few minutes. <laughs> anyway, so Jesus <laughs> says, which is lawful to do. And so he heals the guy. Hmm. And what he does, he says, stretch out your hand hmm. and the man stretched it. I want someone to know that Jesus' instructions or Jesus' commands had are his enablement. That's right. When Jesus tells you to do something, that word has the capacity to enable wow. you to do it. I love it. Uh, when he says in his word, uh, you know, um, be healed, that word has the healing capacity Amen. in it. Amen. And so I don't know, you know, as we are in week eight, what is Jesus telling you? And sometimes he speaks through your past, as we said in week mm. one. We, what we said God will speak through his word. He'll speak through his, you know, dreams and visions. He'll speak through music. He'll speak through in whichever ways. When you hear God has said, don't put but. Say, he said it, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. When your pastor speak, preaches a word, in that word, there is a grace to activate it. That's right. Uh, this month, we're talking about relationships and marriages. That word has the capacity to bring That's healing. Right. Just say, it's my word, I'm going to stretch out my I'm hand. I'm going to receive it. Come on, I'm going to receive it and do it. God's word has his enablement. Yes, And yes. I love it. Walk in that blessing. Yes. I, I, and then we've been talking about family as well. Mm. Uh, and so verse 14, he says, he appointed the 12 That's that right. they might be with him and mm. that he may send them mm. out. Um when Jesus wanted to change a world-changing movement, he started by making a family. That's right. He started by pulling a family together. And, and he brings them on board that they may be with him. Mm. But not just a family, but it's a family on mission that That's he may right. send them out. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And you got to, you know, keep doing that dance of where Jesus is inviting you mm. and where he's challenging you to mm. go. As a discipleship group, be together. But still go out. Have the perspective of out. Hey, come on. Yeah. yeah. And later on, I think by chapter six, we're going to be seeing him sending out. But we're going to uh, get that to that uh, later. Um, like we said, this book is so fast. Remember we said Mark, Mark, Mark for me is a TikTok version. Mm. So we see really early on in the book how the, 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 the scribes, uh, the, what's it called? The... Um, the the, priests, uh, priests yeah, already yeah. were upset with Jesus very fast and they yeah. start coming at him with questions yeah. trying to trap him very quickly and so even then they come to attack him and, and question him constantly yeah. you see this happening blow by blow yeah. and I love that Jesus responds also blow by blow man True. Uh, and, and, and he, he immediately is able to set them right and get mm. them in their place yeah. so we move to the, them coming down and, and trying to trap him because they're saying you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit yeah. you know, they're like are you really of God you must be for them like, yeah. can, the, can the enemy attack himself? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like in a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. 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 And so, and then towards the end there, he affirms that idea of family again. Mm. He says, who's my mother? Mm. Who's my brother? Mm. Who's my sister? All it is you. this who do the will of yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And so we see just creating a family. And uh, in that sense, a Chris preach of family, uh, calling them back together. I really like that part because sometimes I think that we limit our perspective when it comes to kingdom family. Mm. And in fact, whenever I get there, I tell God, help me understand that my church is my family. Come on. That fellow believers are my family. And I don't think we get it. That You, you know, I think sometimes when you travel is when you get to see that. Mm. Because when you're in another country that's not your own and you need a family, when you find Christians to find yourself connected just True. because of that. Yeah, I remember one time, and 
so I'll give a random story. I traveled. Yeah, I did go to Italy one time. Wow. And I was stuck at the airport alone for long hours. No wonder you're a pasta. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this man? Who is this guy? So anyway, so I'm stuck at the airport and I'm sitting by myself waiting for a group of people to come. Like it was about eight hours later. And so I didn't know the language, just sitting there by myself. And mm. then all of a sudden, this family comes and sits across from me. Yeah. And instinctively, we look at each other and we're like, we are together. So I sit for, you know how you're shy? Yeah. So the, the wife, then I could see them discussing me, the wife and the two kids, they look at me, we look at each other and they come and say, hi, um, are you uh, uh, from Kenya? Are you a Christian? Are you from joining this thing? I said, I'm like, yeah, I knew it was you guys. Do you know, the minute they said that, they watched my bags and I slept. Wow. Just peace from knowing we are on mission together. Yeah. And so I feel like we don't embrace the concept of being gospel family together and what peace and joy that can bring us and it's because of that that jesus says those who accepted him you will live in houses you never built yes. you'll eat of things you never yes. planted you have many houses you have and you, you get to experience that mm. and not just in your home country but you go to a country where they speak a different language yes. and the people just you know include you in just because of that come on and then he he we move into chapter four. Yeah, chapter four. Uh, the parable of the sower gets repeated there. I think yeah. we handled that in so my a view. couple of parables are gonna be repeated. True. But remember, we said it's a different camera camera. Yes. Camera I'll... lens, please. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> so um, even if I'm slippery sliding, yeah. do not uh, stop to to don't pass through them. Don't skim through them. Take time to read the words. Yeah. Um, and ask God, what do you want me to see that I didn't see before? True. In the other part. Yeah, and I like that because God's word is amazing. This is what it says in verse um, uh, 26 to, I think, to 28. But I'm going to do just to it. says, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scattered seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprout, mm. though he does not know how. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Though he doesn't know how. The word of God is being sowed. Day and night you sleep, you wake mm. up. The seed is growing, though you don't know how. Yeah. Sometimes you want to know how is God's word going to change me? How is God's mm. word going to give you know remove this anxiety? How is God's word going to change this attitude? You just can keep consuming the word, keep letting God's word grow in the in the soil of That's your heart. Right. Keep allowing the seed. Yeah. Though you don't know how, one day you wake up and you're like, I don't enjoy that vulgar music. One day you wake up and you're like, I don't enjoy that company anymore. One day you wake up and how come I serve every Sunday? Imagine, and so, it's so tiring. Yeah. And I enjoy it. Come on. You don't know how, but keep allowing the seed of God's word to do that. To in fall fact, in the I love how it heart. ends in verse 20 because it says, But those that were sown on good soil are the ones that uh, hear the word, accept, and bear fruit. 30 fold, mm. 60 fold, 100 fold. I, I don't know why when, when I read this uh, time in Mark, it hit me that the potential of God's word in my mm. life has the capacity to bear fruit mm. beyond my ability. Come on. It has the capacity to bear fruit in my rest. Yes. And that's the word of this year. Mm. That you will have divine, ex- there'll be ease, ease and acceleration. And acceleration. Come on. So I'm like, just as I dwell in his word, mm. I will experience ease and acceleration mm. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, mm. because it is the sower who has the power. God's mm. word has power to do that in our lives. So sweet. Yeah. yeah. Now, towards the end of chapter four, Jesus and his boys are getting in a boat. Um, mm. And this time, Jesus is sleeping mm. in the stand on a cushion. You guys, <laughs> like he's dead asleep. And the disciples are there. They are fighting the waves. They are doing all that. At some point, they wake up. And this is what they say in verse 38. They say, Jesus, when, uh, when the disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? You don't you care. And you know, sometimes you look at that and you wonder, yeah, Jesus, don't you care? <laughs> no, there are things in my life sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, don't you care? Why are you sleeping on yeah, this one? Yeah. This is for action. Yeah. <laughs> this is for walking on water. This is not for sleeping. This is for you to come. <laughs> but don't you care? And, you know, in, in chapter 3, we've just read Jesus saying to be with him mm-hmm. and that he may send them out to be his disciples. Disciples are those who do what the master is doing. And so Jesus was saying, if I'm sleeping, boys, you better be sleeping. Oh my. Why are you rolling the boat when the master is sleeping? Get in a cushion and sleep. Ah. 
Because every time you're Even doing, now, like, I don't know. <laughs> every time you're doing that which your master is not doing, mm. you always come back and say, "Why don't you care?" Yeah, you're you're anxious about. Come it. on, yeah. Be still and know that I'm God. Mm. You keep rowing the boat, but you're gonna come back to Jesus and say, "You don't care." You know why this word is so powerful? I am on sabbatical come break, on. and all I'm doing is really sleeping <laughs> a lot and just being in the word. True. And I've realized that the action of sitting still, mm. that be still and know that I'm Lord. True. Like now I'm in a place where I, I I do this thing where I sit quietly for about say with ten minutes and mm. ten minutes was loud mm. without interruption and just surrendering. I open my hands and I say, You are Lord. Mm. That action alone, I feel like panicking to say this the world is moving mm. and I'm seated here just to say be still. Lord. I mean but that's what he wants. Wow. Be still and know that acknowledge that it is not by your strength. Come acknowledge on. it's not your gift. Acknowledge it's not your works. Mm. It is being with me, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that counts. Oh. And it's me who will cause you to anyway be successful. True. And so in a year when the Lord has said ease and acceleration, I am going to experience it by, yeah. by being still. Ease. Yeah. So even when you say sleep, I'm like, brother, me who the people is sleeping, I'm like, ah, ah, do you know what you're asking? <laughs> so yeah. It's such an interesting word to run with it. True, yeah. true. And so Jesus gets up, calms the storms, tells the disciples in Mark 4.40, up to now, don't you have enough faith in me? You know? I want to tell you, be quiet. Yeah. You have you walked with the Lord long enough that up to now, you should have faith in him. Mm. You know, I've seen him provide for my family. Up to now, I should be able to give fast fruits. Wow. Up to now, I should be able to wake up and pray at 4.30 with my video on and my can mute it. Up to now, I should, you know. Yeah, this is so, I've worked with you long enough that by now you should be able to keep in step with me on some areas. But that's Jesus, man. Um, yeah, I love that he was gracious with them. Come on. I love that he still calmed the storm. Yeah. And they still got off the boat together. True. Yeah. So he's not giving up on you. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's keep walking this walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chapter five. Now, they've slept. They've gone to the other side. <laughs> what are they going to the other side to do? They're going to heal one person. One guy. One guy. And they don't even allow that guy to follow him. Imagine. But you'll be shocked when you read that story. I think by, by that Wednesday, Thursday, that you'll be reading the story of Legion. Basically, they go on this boat. They're about to die. They go to the other side. Uh, this uh, man who could not be, you know, controlled. He could not be restrained. No boundaries could bound. Mm. You know, all that. No chains could bind him. He's, you know, he sees just and says, why am I coming to disturb us before our time is there? And, Imagine. Um, it, it's amazing how demons know how to address Jesus. True. They know protocol. Yeah. They address him by, by yeah. his, his title. Yeah. They ask him, I, what have you come to do? And they know Jesus? timing. They know timing. <laughs> they say, is it now yeah, that you are, if the thing is going to be fulfilled? Yeah. So they already know prophetically what he's going to come do. On, come and on. So they address him uh, appropriately and say, then they tell him, uh, please, eh? mm. uh, just send us to the pigs. Send us to the pigs. Mm. They, and they, so, they request permission where to be sent. Yes, mm. and so and so, you know, uh, the 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 demons run and they enter the pigs, you know, like a piggy bank, and the piggy bank, you know, the you know, is uh, this guy is your pastor? And just goes. <laughs> that's why it goes to the bank of the. <laughs> really, really, the bank of oh Lord, have mercy, <laughs> Father Lord. <laughs> Welcome to the checkout, people. I know. A couple of things here, Pastor Angie. When that happens, the guys go like, send Jesus away. In fact, they beg him to live. Imagine. I want you to see a couple of things here, Pastor Angie. Number one, these people would rather have remained with a demon-possessed man Imagine. and keep their pigs. And keep their pigs. The cost of a man's freedom was not worth it for them. And it's important to know that because, uh, first of all, these guys are Jews. Mm. And so it they should not hang out with pigs. These guys were dealing pigs. They're yeah. dealing pigs. And yeah. they're not supposed to, by law, to be dealing with pigs. Yeah. But because pigs had a good income. Yeah. Uh, pigs had, uh, because the Gentiles love pork meat. Yeah. And so it means uh, business was good for them. And these guys are businessmen. They would rather have the man possessed. Then, you know, there's a system that ensures... The poor stay poor and the troubled stay troubled mm. because there is an income generating that. I feel just like praying for people who are struggling with mental health. Mm. And of course, we, we went through this series where we talked about why mental health happens for different reasons, medical trauma, nini, nini. But there's a system almost that wants to ensure people stay there. 
God, anyone who's suffering or struggling mental health, I just want to pray mm-hmm. peace of God over them. Any systems that ensure that they stay that way, Lord, we dismantle those chains right now in the mighty name of Jesus and we speak the peace of God over every mind, over every heart, over every family, over every soul in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I also want you to see something else. Not only not only were you know the cost of a man not worthy their business, but there are, there are different prayers that are made to Jesus or made different requests that are made to Jesus at this point. Mm-hmm. The first one is by the demons when they say, send us to the pigs, yeah. and Jesus grants it. The second one is by these people when they beg Jesus to leave their, 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 their side of the show, and Jesus complies and is leaving. There's a third one mm-hmm. where this man who's now in his correct mind, he comes to Jesus and says, can I follow you? Yeah. And to that one, he says, no. Imagine. And you almost like, is that you don't love me? Yeah, exactly. like, no, just go tell people how the Lord has shown you Imagine. mercy. Come on. And he goes and he preaches in towns that were called Decapolis. Mm. Later on, there were churches that were planted in Decapolis, 10 cities. The guy becomes the first evangel- wow. the evangelist there. And he's sharing how the Lord has shown him mercy. This is powerful because there are different ways in which Jesus heals. There are people who the Lord sees their face and says, your faith has made you well. Mm. There are others who Jesus sees another person's face and heal them. them. He saw the centurion and healed them. Yeah. The, 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 the servant. He saw the, the poor guys who, you know, you know, dug through the roof. He saw their faith and he healed mm. the paralytic. But there are times when the Lord heals because the Lord has had mercy on you. Oh, come on. Amen. You did do nothing. No one has faith apart from the faith of the Lord. Wow. And the, the man needed to go, go preach that because that's the grace of God. Mm. It wasn't your faith so that you can say, oh, guys, have faith like me. It wasn't your brother's faith so that you can say, oh, guys, have faith on me. It's the Lord has mercy, mercy on, on you. you. The grace of God. It's the grace of God. Come on. I love Come on. It. And so for that reason, he says no. He says no to that prayer offered for the man to follow him. And I love it because even what I when I, when I see that, I think that in the church sometimes, in mm. the church settings, we also put... Uh, what you call it, barriers mm. in terms of when can you evangelize? When's mm. the last, the next, the right time for you to share your story? Yeah. This guy has been not even followed Jesus for how many years? Yeah. He just uh, got delivered and he's the guy who has evangelized True. This, the 10 cities that you're seeing and yeah. the churches have come from them. Yeah. So I think that even for us to pray for that perspective, to see people as God see them, sees them, because he does have mercy and grace on whom he chooses for the expansion of his kingdom. True and so may I not be a barrier to maybe people who brought, God has brought around me mm. for the sake of the kingdom. Yeah. 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 Soon uh, they are walking. Um, mm. uh, I think Jairus come and says, hey, come and heal my, 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 daughter. My, my daughter. As they are walking, Jesus is interrupted. Tell us about that. So Jesus <laughs> has just gotten back from the from the boat, boat and then this guy comes at him and says, oh, you know, immediately my daughter is sick. Come mm. and heal her. So he was on his way to do something and says, oh, let's go heal your daughter. Mm. On the way, the daughter has been, is 12 years old. Yeah. Important to note. So on the way, they meet a woman who, because mm. now crowds are coming. Jesus has come. Hey, news has reached. So everyone is, you know, pushing. Mm. Like they're trying to make it to Jairus' house. Then a woman interrupts and touches the hem of his garment. Mm. and he feels the power leave him mm. and she's been tormented for 12 years so it's 12 a child who's 12 and 12 what? years of torment and jesus heals i said he tells her your faith has healed oh you. come on so good and a, a pain that people had been unable to heal no doctor uh, no one, no, no, you know, the, the, the what you call the scribes and Pharisees have come and told her stuff. She's been ostracized by society. That's the person that has received her healing mm. after 12 years of torment. Wow. And then the 12 year old, they go into the house in their room and they pray for her and she wakes up wow. and receives her healing. I think Jesus stops even with this woman so that Jairus can build his faith. Mm. Jairus, I've just, the day your wife's water broke is the same day yes. or, you know, same oh, level of time wow. that this woman issue started. Oh, come on. If I'm able to heal a 12-year <laughs> issue over here, this I can one. be able to raise your daughter as I well. I can be able to raise your daughter. I find that story so encouraging to me mm. because I feel like there's immediate, God is interruptible. Mm. He's interruptible oh, with the on. emergency you have right there, right yes. then. Mm. And then even if it's in the middle of, of him moving in a crowd mm. and you've had an issue for how many years, God will still stop and you'll be able to get your healing and Come receive on. your blessing for that season. Mm. So I feel like Come to God with faith. Mm. You know, get in. You know, push him to sit at the front of the service. Wow. Get in there and because he's interruptible. Wow. For that. 
I love that about God. I love that. Yeah. That's so sweet. That's so awesome. Then by the time now we get to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're in mm-hmm. chapter six. Mm-hmm. Um, amazing there. Uh, when Jesus is talking about a prophet is not without honor apart from his own yeah. town. Yeah. Uh, basically, these guys um, um, uh, see Jesus performing miracles. And in chapter six, verse, uh, verse three, they're like, ah. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Mm, mm. <laughs> Isn't his my mom's Mary? You Isn't know? he the one that we know? Isn't yeah? Mm. See, and your, his brother is you know J- J- James John. He's not the one that I held the other day when he was crying. I know mm, that I pinched because he did this. <laughs> I know. And Jesus said, "A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, among his relatives, in his own home." Mm. And then he says, "This is what this is so sad." He says. He could do no miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Wow. You know, just before Jesus was amazed at this woman's faith. And then he's also amazed at, at the, the lack, lack of, of faith. faith. In what way are you amazing, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> it also teaches us. It also teaches us not to become familiar. Oh, come on with grace. So I feel don't become familiar with grace. Don't become familiar with going to church. Don't mm. become familiar with his word. Mm. Come expecting mm. miracle signs and wonders. Come on. Because it's easy for us to become so familiar that God's power mm. is nothing. So we even limit his more. Ah. We, we box him in a place. True. But God is saying, don't limit me. Mm. Don't become um, those people who chase Jesus away yeah. until he moves. Yeah. I'm like, no, I want my space, my church, my home to be a space of miracle signs and wonders Come on. that he will not leave because I've become too familiar with him. Yeah, and sometimes not just I'm familiar with Jesus, it's familiar with his servants. With, yes, with you his know, word, You can yes. be familiar with your pastor or your DG leader. Hey, they are a man, true. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, we are all failures and all that. We are all sinful. But in this season, they're occupying an office that we shouldn't be familiar yeah. with. Jesus was a man, but he was occupying an office. He was he was more than a man mm. in that sense, at least for Jesus. But, the, you know, recognize the office and the graces that flow in that exactly. office and be able to honor that. Yeah, And it's not easy just to receive graces in an office. No, it isn't. Yeah, that's why when Elisha says, I want a double portion of your anointing, Elijah says, you've asked for a hard thing. A very hard thing. Yeah, yeah. if it was easy for you to just receive grace and anointing, you would have received it. But you've asked for a hard mm. thing. And part of that is not being familiar mm. with the grace. Yeah. I yeah, that God places on people in different times and in different seasons. For his own, you know, for his own um, divine purpose. He does. Yeah, yeah. Then he sends out the twelve. I love that part. Mm. I find it one of the parts that makes me pause to mm. say, am I ready for this? Wow. Because he calls out the tools and he gives them some qualifications about how to be sent out. Mm. He says, uh, he, he says, I'll give you authority to, to heal the sick, to drive out people. He says, I'll give you authority. Mm. But he says, take nothing with you for that journey. No bread, no bag. He breaks it down mm. so that you don't assume for yourself what nothing means. Mm. He breaks it down because you know me, you know me. Yeah. Girls, we, we know we're like, uh, yeah. take nothing with six bags. Yeah, yeah we have planning. six suitcases in that. He's like, no bread, no bag. I'm like, what? No bag? No money <laughs> in your belt. Says, no, don't put only the sandals you're wearing, oh, only two tunics. He's like, what specific? only two outfits what? he's like boss he's like go from place to place he's like, don't plan the journey for mm. us colleagues who are like he's like mm. no just go where the Lord is sending you and where you are received do the ministry True. so I always sit back and I'm like God this this work that you're calling us to is almost one where you say choose to surrender I'm going to plan the day walk knowing when you enter the matatu there may be someone I'm mm. calling for you to minister to mm. When you go at uh, the estate, I've placed you in this. Uh, there's a reason and you're in that space. Uh, you know, that that whole, your life, wherever it is you are. I've, I just, I recently watched uh, Fiddle on the Roof. Mm. And the guy says, you know, if I were a rich man, I love it because he ends with saying, is there some plan that mm. I'm destroying? Yeah. If I, if I were a rich man. Mm. So he's telling God, is it necessary for me to be poor? Wow. But what I, I understood is he surrendered in the end and said, mm. if it is part of your plan mm. that I may be in this situation, it's part of your plan. Come on. So I, I feel like everyone must come to a place where they say, whatever mm. your plan is, I mm. surrender to it. I uh, surrender. I'm not going to walk with my plan for having my six bags, seven yeah. suitcases, which yeah. has to be where he's like, no, walk <laughs> easily and smoothly with it. Yeah, you. come on. Mm. I love that. Uh, then shortly after, John, uh, you know, John the Baptist came to be ahead of Jesus. Mm. I think the guys heard wrongly, so they beheaded him. 
I don't know why we're with you in this movement. So, yeah. <laughs> Q is just staring at you. Like, I don't know what to do with you now. <laughs> so, they beheaded John the Baptist. And so, Jesus has to take this trip for recreational retreat with his boys. Mm-hmm. Um, and they go away just to chill because that story really hits him hard. Um, and so they go again. The story of re, uh, feeding the five thousand happens. Uh, share is shared again. The Jesus, the story of Jesus walking on water is shared again. Uh, but again, as Pastor Andrew said, it's a different camera angle. So don't just say we've read this before. Still read Still it. it. There's yeah. a fresh vibe in it. There's a fresh story in it that you can be able to glean uh, from, uh, from it. it. Yeah. Uh, and then I love how it ends because it ends with all these miracle signs and wonders. And, I, I think what we need to notice, I think it's the second time in our reading today mm. or this week where Jesus goes off by himself in solitude. Yeah. Even after this deep ministry, he was looking for a time away with his boys to debrief, but also to mourn and to grieve. Mm. And for me, who's in a year on break, I, I realized, on. are we having rhythms in our lives where we are looking um, to be with God mm. and to be with the Father and reflect on whatever it is God is saying and doing in our lives? So even as we come to a, a, an end of this week, have you created rhythms by now to retreat and be with God? Have you mm. created uh, rhythms where you're hearing from your father yeah. what it is that he wants to say and do with you? And in those seasons, he interrupts in these interruptions, but it's miracles. True. It's signs, it's mm. wonders where he says, I'm going to have 12 baskets each one of you will have some left wow. over. Wow. You're going to see him walking and experiencing him walking on water and receiving that miracle that only the disciples could talk about, mm. uh, but all in pursuit of being with their father. Come on. And so I pray that as you continue in your studies this week, as you go into this week, expect God to give you, to be in the spaces where you experience him as your father and mm. as your God, but also expect, and I pray that there'll be miracles, there'll be signs, there'll be wonders, and don't forget to write, chat with us uh, down there and say, what are you hearing? What is God doing? What is God saying? Come on. See you next week. Yes.